With dreams still at large, this aging politician has determination that is enviable. He wants to see a better and greater East African community and a better investment platform and good education. So when you exit or when you're out of the world, what advice do you give the youth to follow into your footsteps to make Uganda a better place? Well, first of all, the, 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 the state and society, we must invest heavily in our youth. That is education and skills. It's not yet well done in Uganda. We must shift all the We are what we are because our parents sacrificed a lot. The little money they had, they put it into education. At least my parents and those in my name and those who never invested in their children. You see, you go to the village and you see the difference. You see it very clearly, the, your generation. So there must be heavy investment in the youth's education and training. And consequently investing in things like industry, agriculture, where jobs will be. My direct advice to our youth is the, the, this culture of getting things quick. That is a big It's problem. a very big, and why? Because we are the ones leading by example. You become a minister today, you want to be driving around a cruiser, you want to build a house, you want to have parties. Where do you get the money from? Somebody leaves the university, he joins you. You are an heir and he wants to, to have a house in one year, he wants a wedding party of 70 million. But first, I get invitations. People have graduated. They are throwing a part of 15 million. They don't even have, their parents are looking to them for money. Yes. So that culture of getting rich quick and everything quickly is very, very dangerous. We must, and we are the ones who are encouraging it. Mm. I see children competing for offices in the secondary schools and universities with the motorcades campaigning in Makerere. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Even in Mbarra, yeah, right. which Mbarra University, which has no street in it, they come and ride on from Nyamitango all the way to, towards Masaka. People have nothing to do with the university. And they are fundraising money for that. So this show way culture we have, we have instilled in our children is extremely dangerous. So those are the two things I would say. Investment in the youth, investing in a, a productive sector to create jobs for them, and the youth themselves having, you ask me what is your plan for 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. I'm over 60, you're asking me for a plan of 10, 15 years, which is very, extremely good. Mm -hmm. But you ask, and the other I was talking to somebody, he's a young lawyer, I say, what is your plan for 15, 20 years? He say, well, what for? You know, mm -hmm. he wants tomorrow. Yes. Maybe let me conclude by quoting one of the people who influenced me immensely. That is Baduka Kunguru. When we had captured Apollo in 86, he found us at State House. Then he talked to me, seven, and then he came to, then he came to Tubo Zako. And he told us, he said, you young people were then young. I looked at the pictures in the papers the other day. It's amazing, every little, every big person looked really... Young. Small, you know, like <laughs> secondary school children. <laughs> And, and slim were not put on these stomachs. And oh, amazing how, huh? how time flies. So he said, you young people, what you have done, you will not enjoy the fruits of your labor. He put it that way. Then we looked, you know, we, we have just fought. We, have, we are young ministers, young officers. You see, we, then he saw us confused. Then he said, he told us a story. Where he found the, the king was touring his subjects. Then he found a very old man on his, walking on his batuks, you know, planting Nazi coconut. Then the king turned to this old man, he said, you old man, you must not, you are not very wise. Why are you planting Nazi? Which is going to take years it, to it grow. Takes, it, it takes years to grow. Maybe, and, and, and it's influencing our politics. Say the, say the old man who was foolish, turned the king, he said, you know, I'm planting this nuts. The nuts have been eating, I don't know who planted it. This one has been, he pointed at the one who has been eating fruits. He said, I don't know who planted it. 
So I'm planting this nice. If I'm lucky, I'll eat its fruits. If I am not lucky, those after me will eat the, the fruits of the tree they never planted, mm. as I've been eating the fruits of the tree I never planted. Yes. Then the king turned to the old man and said, hey, you old man, you are, you are calling him foolish. He said, you are very, very clever. <laughs> <laughs> then he told us, Namwa Zabu, gave wow, him gold. gold yes. Then the old man turned around and said, Me, I don't understand. And as it takes a long time to bear fruits. Mm. Me, mine has given fruits the yes. same day. Yes, the same then day the you're king, planting. The it. king got more excited and gave him another round of uh, Zabu. Then he joked, said, has Malako. Then we got the import yes. of. Then a few years later, the minister was traveling in Ankara with this education officer. You know, there are these canopy trees, they look beautiful on the farms. Mm. Then I told him, that tree looks nice. If I could have it on my farm, he said, but minister, that tree takes a long time. <laughs> it takes about 20, 30 20. years to... I said, what is your problem? Mm. I said, these things you enjoy, did you plant them? So out of annoyance, I went, and, I went and planted the mm. mahogany in, oh. my, in my little mm. land in Ushenyi. Mm. It's now about 15 years old. Wow. Mahogany takes eight years to mature. Mm. So I wanted to plant something that I will not benefit from. Mm. So the biggest problem that is facing Uganda in particular and Africa in general mm. is leaders in the youth who want things for now. Yes. They have no plans for tomorrow. Mm. Even the, some participate in cheating for the children. Mm. So we ha if we don't change this culture and we have medium long term plans, we are doomed. Even now we look at UP for, for politics rather than development of the country. Mm -hmm. So this is my advice to the youth is that they should not copy our bad ways. Mm -hmm. They should have. I even Something advise some of my children, I some of my children, I mean those in my care, I say, no, if you're a boy, don't matter when you are 23, 24, what, what have you done? Don't become an MP on graduation. First do something and develop your character itself or to me. They want to be MPs, they want to be ministers, they want to be director of medical services. They join a company today, he wants to be the chief accountant. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a terrible culture. Mm -hmm. When they are tired, they start their own company, the company collapses in the Uganda affair. Mm -hmm. So we should have a culture of learning, of medium, long term, and to plan for things that will happen when, even if we live to be 100 years, mm -hmm. when we are dead. Yes. And that's, that's the difference between Africa, Europe, America, and Asia. Mm -hmm. We are short termists. You plant a muchicha, you, you can even plant a dodo and die before you eat it. Mm. Who, who says that when you, when you plant today, you cannot die tomorrow? So that, that's the biggest problem we have. Mm. And I talk to my children about it, I talk to my relatives about it. And uh, it's, it's a big problem, mm. but it's solvable. He possesses the mark of a true hero, but like I said, you don't have to save the world to be a hero. You can be a hero to your children by providing the best care you can give. You can also be a hero to your neighborhood by helping those in need. You can also be a hero here on Life Stories by helping those who require your help. Till next time, I'm Zuena Chiremasali. God bless you. <laughs>